You turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to talk to you for just a couple minutes here about the soul winning scam. Um, <clears throat> I've been involved in that whole movement, uh, you know, tracting, witnessing, door to door, street preaching, all this different stuff. Um, I've been exposed to the Hiles method of the way of doing it and the whole Baptist, everything else. And I've gone through the thing of telling people you need to be out winning souls. You can see it in some of my older studies and whatever else. Um, but I came out with a video not, I don't even remember what it was, but I talked about the thing of the danger of door-to-door, -door, you know, witnessing, or I think it was the thing of soul winning or whatever else. And um, a lot of people got ticked off about it and whatever. And Okay. <laughs> Um, you can't please everybody, but, uh, but I've been thinking about this thing a lot lately and there are some things I didn't really cover all that well and, uh, some things I've learned in my own personal witnessing and, and, and I just want to challenge you today. Um, if you're into the whole soul winning movement type of thing, I want you to consider a few points I'm going to bring up here. Um, because if, if what you're doing does not line up with the scriptures, then why are you doing it? Um, you need to examine yourself and say, okay, am I doing this thing because the Lord told me to do this or because tradition is saying to do this? Is it effective? Is it actually real? Is it based on Scripture? Those are the question, questions that you need to ask. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Are ye able? For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his reward, his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Now we're going to go back through and look at a bunch of points here. Um, but let me just ask you the first question. Where in the New Testament does it say, go out and do soul winning? There's only one verse of scripture that says about he that winneth souls is wise, and it's in the Old Testament. We're going to look at it here in just a few minutes. Um, where's this thing at? I mean, problem number one is uh, the term soul winning. Where's that in the New Testament? If that's the basis, we're going to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, where does it say soul winning? Where does it say we're to go out and win souls? It doesn't say that. But let's just stick with this thing. Okay? Back to verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto carnal, or as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as, as unto babes in Christ. Um, what is Paul doing? Uh, I believe he's actually having contact with people that he has led to the Lord. Um, think problem number one. Uh, the modern soul winning method, especially the Jack Hiles method of quick prayerism and just go up, there's no repentance of sin, there's no, you know, it's just going from unbelief to belief. You go up and you, and you take the people and you, you take them, you show them verses of scripture and you have your little method worked out. And I've shown the video proof of this. These guys actually have a, a thing that they say, a, a no fail, a little presentation that they do, you know, just like the Jehovah's Witnesses, just like the Mormons, just like other door to door salesmen. And it's this, this special little speech and you can trap the person. And if they say this, then you can go this way. And if they say that, then you can go that way and whatever, and you can get them every time. Okay. Let's just say it's legitimate for a minute. Do you follow up? Well, no, it's not our responsibility. Um, it was Paul's responsibility. Paul followed up. And they weren't doing very good. And Paul didn't say, well, I guess it just didn't take with them or something. You know, I, I guess I'm just going to go off and do more soul. When he said, I need to come to you. And I've not been able to teach you spiritual things. You'd have to stay carnal because you're just a bunch of babies in Christ. And he's there and he's, he's spending time with them. Do you do that? Hmm. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. 
For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Again, he's dealing with these new converts. Do these Baptists do that? No. Unless they come to their church building, which we'll see here in just a minute isn't even scriptural. Verse 4, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? You know, I remember going out door to door, and there'd be these guys that we'd meet, and they'd say, um, we'd say, are you saved? If you died today, do you know for sure you, where you would go? Uh, you know, I think I'd go to heaven. I remember the one guy standing there, he's, you know, smoking a cigar, and he says, yeah, I think I'd go to heaven. And uh, brother was talking to him, he said, um, what are you basing that on? He said, well, he said, he used to go to Liberty Baptist Church. I actually had Jack Hiles there, Ephrata, Pennsylvania. He used to go to Liberty Baptist Church, and he said, that was in the days before it blew up. <laughs> and he laughed. Uh, he was led to the Lord by a <clears throat> Baptist. Wasn't saved. Wicked man. Brother was talking to him, went on and, and you know, got to talking. Guy wasn't saved. <laughs> he didn't know a thing. But you see, he was part of a system of active soul winning. And we're going out, we're hitting the streets, brother. We're pounding the streets. We're out there winning souls. And some guy led him in some little prayer and said, come to church. And he did for a little while. And then it just fell apart. And he said, oh, okay, forget it. I'm going back to my secular life. He said, well, he was saved. He was just carnal. <laughs> um, carnal Christians are not people that have no concept of what it means to be saved. A carnal Christian is somebody that's born again, that's saved, and just messed up their flesh. All right? And again, how are you going to know this stuff if you're not going out and, you know, discipling these people and following up with your supposed uh, soul winning but you see these Baptists, and they go around, and they have these soul-winning crusades and whatever else. It's funny because the Catholics do crusades, but another issue. But they go out, and they do these little soul-winning crusades, and they're in a, in, a, in a town, and then they just, they go off. Going up to people. And, and you know, there's another thing there in, in, in psychology, I'm sure, and, and I don't, I'm not an expert on any of that stuff. But there's something there that people, when you first meet them, you have kind of that desire to be polite and kind of, nice and whatever else and thieves take advantage of that all the time because they know if they're walking down the street like this and they're kind of looking back and forth and walking up to somebody the average person isn't going oh get the gun out or you know oh hey you know they're just oh maybe the guy's got his hands are cold or something and he's looking back and forth looking for you know you make excuses and the guy comes up and says hand me your money he puts a knife to your throat or something and you go oh i didn't see that coming well, see, this whole soul winning thing is very similar to that. You go up, you knock on the door. I remember knocking on people's doors. Good night. I used to do that all the time. You know, knock on a door and they come to the door and they're, oh, yeah, what, what is it? You know, and they're, they're just freaked out. And a couple of times we'd actually meet, you know, saved Christians and they'd say, you know, oh, what can I do for you? And you'd say, oh, we're just out here going door to door, to, like ask people if, if they're going to heaven when they die. And they'd kind of, um, where are you from? And we'd say, you know, Liberty Baptist Church. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought you were Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons, or I didn't know what you're doing. You're dressed in suits and ties that look like federal agents or something. <laughs> oh, black suits with white shirts and black ties. You know, I mean, we, weren't, we weren't wearing black sunglasses, but we maybe we should have um, get more results, <laughs> you know. But uh, you'll see this thing. Again, pastor I used to know. He sat on his front porch and some very, very pushy Baptists, very aggressive Jack Hiles type Baptists came up and they would not take no for an answer. And he finally just said, okay, what do I need to do to get saved? What do I need to do? And they said, well, just pray this prayer. You know, and they led him through the prayer of salvation. And they said, congratulations, brother, you're now a Christian or whatever else. You can come to church. And he said, I wasn't saved. He said, I told, I, I you know, did what they told me to do just so they go away. You know, how many other people are like that? Maybe it's not actually soul winning that these people are doing, these Baptists. Maybe they're actually soul damning. Do you ever think about that? And yet, when you do come out and you rebuke these people, what do they do? When's the last time you personally led someone to the Lord? Huh? Don't they hold it over your head? Kind of a prideful thing there. I've led so many to the Lord. When's the last time you've done it? Did you ever encounter, encounter one of those people? Mm-hmm. 
You're not dealing with a, uh, somebody who's right with the Lord. Let's continue. Verse 4. Uh, well, the, we went over verse 4. <clears throat> verse 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Paul's saying, I'm not even that special. I, you know, the Lord gives any saved man or you know woman. You know, he gives us, say, well, any man in the text there, but it's implied, you know, man, saved man would be, you know, include women, saved women as well. You can witness, you know, to lost people as well. But God gives it to anybody that's saved. We're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. So you don't go around saying, I'm a, a, a Wesleyan Methodist, or I'm a Lutheran, or I'm a Mennonite, Menno Simon, you know, um, Calvinist. What is all that stuff about? Ridiculous nonsense is what it is. But here's the key. Verse 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Planting, watering, God does the saving. Where is there instant salvation in that? Paul doesn't say, bless God, brother, I led so many people to the Lord, I'm a soul winner. He didn't say that. I've planted, Apollos watered, and then God did the saving. God gave the increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, when you start to realize what the Bible actually teaches... It takes all this soul winning, soul winning, soul winning, wind souls, wind souls, wind souls. It takes all that pressure off of you. And all of a sudden you start to realize, you know what, all i got to do is just witness for Jesus Christ to people. When the Lord opens up a door of opportunity and, and somebody says, beautiful day, isn't it? You say, yeah, praise the Lord. You know, Jesus Christ gave us a wonderful day today. And you see that person, they go, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, you know, they walk away. What would you do? Just planted a seed. A little while later that person's out and they say, yeah, you know, uh, it's a nice day. And somebody else says, yeah, well, you know, what the Bible says about who created days. And that person says, I wonder if this is another one of these people that talks about Jesus. And they say, what do you mean? Well, let me just show you what the Bible says. And they show them some scripture. What are they doing? Watering. And you'll see that thing. I mean, I've, I've seen it personally with, with witnessing to people. You'll see sometimes it'll be like a first contact. You plant the seed. And then there's other times and you'll see somebody and you, just out of the blue, they'll just, I mean, I, I met this, this one time I was at Lowe's uh, up north of here. And uh, this guy, he said, he's one of the employees and he comes out and he says, hey, let me help you put your lumber in the back of your truck. And he's putting it in the back and he's looking at the back of my truck and he goes, he stops and he says, are you a Christian? And I said, yeah, I am. And he said, uh, you know, my girlfriend, she, she's been praying for me and, and things. And she said that, you know, he said, I've, I've really gotten messed up. And the guy had this big old scar on the side of his head. I don't know what in the world kind of accident or fight or whatever. Rough life, I'm sure, the guy had. And he, he wasn't quite all there, you know. And I think, he, I think he had some really rough things in his past. And he said, yeah, he said, I was in the wrong crowd. And he said, I was in drugs. And he said, I've been in and out of jail kind of thing. And, I, and you know, had some real problems. He said, my girlfriend, she told me that, that uh, I need to go to church and, I need to get my life straightened up and, and whatever. And he said, ah, man, he said, I think this is this wasn't a coincidence uh, that I ran into you. And I said, well, I said, you don't need to be going to church. I said, you need to get a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to get your salvation figured out. Oh, wow. He said, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I said, yeah. And, and he said, well, i got to get back to work. And I, I'm like, I wish I could have given him a Bible or something, but it was one of those situations. You don't always get to say everything you want to say and, you know, you know, later on you're down there going, oh man, I should have said this. Ah, oh, I should have said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're, if you've had those chances, but what was the deal? Um, that guy's girlfriend planted a seed in him. You need to get right with the Lord. And I was watering. I never met the guy again. I have no idea what the Lord did. God can give the increase though. If I'd see that guy sometime again, he'd say, hey, I got saved. You think I'm going to go, oh, praise the Lord, go to church. You know, No, I'm going to say, hey, do you need anything? Can I give you a Bible? Do you have a Bible? Can I, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to be there to disciple that guy. And you see, when you start thinking this way, you start to realize what the Bible actually says, all of a sudden, like I said, that pressure starts to come off of this winning souls, winning souls, winning souls. You know, 
the whole soul winning movement, the modern soul winning movement is about getting people into the seats of Baptist churches. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's what it is. It's exactly what it is. And that's why you see these people, they get pressured and come, they get the high pressure sales tactic and they actually come to church and then they're there for a little bit and then they fall away and then they go right back into the world. Why? Because they were victimized by some independent fundamental Baptist uh, mind control person that's going out soul winning. And a lot of times the uh, soul winner, most of the time, these guys are lost themselves. What a situation. Verse 7, So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. But how does that work when you're a soul winner? Oh, brother so-and-so, we're so honored to have him here today. He's going to teach a class on soul winning because he's led thousands to the Lord. Excuse me? Jack Hiles? Oh, we're one of the greatest independent fundamental Baptist churches that's led thousands to the Lord. We've led thousands, you know. I knew a brother that was actually going to Hiles Anderson College back when Jack Hiles was a big shot, you know, still alive before he died and went to hell. And this guy's going there, and he said they're out doing this bus ministry thing or whatever else, and he said that uh, they had a bunch of children, and they said every head bowed, every eye closed, and they, and they prayed, and they did a head count. They said, you know, 45 children here or whatever else today, and, and praise the Lord, they all prayed the prayer. They all got saved. And they counted his soul saved. Went back, and Jack Hiles took credit for it. Here at this revival meeting this weekend, we had X number of people saved, and this brother went to his, you know, um, professors there at the, you know, cemetery, <coughs> seminary. He went there to his professors, and he said, uh, hey, why did he include this number here that Jack Hiles personally led these people to the Lord? I was on that bus ministry thing, and I don't even think those people got saved. What's this all about? And they told him to shut his mouth. I don't remember. They might have even shipped him after that, kicked him out of the school. What's going on? They're lying. They're liars. Paul says, I'm not anything. It's God that gives the increase. Give all glory to the Lord. But not when you're a soul winner. I mean, you want to see a good example? Just look at any of the new IFB things with Stephen Anderson or any of the other little cultic devils that are in that movement. And they'll go out there and they'll say, you know, They'll be at some restaurant slopping down a cheeseburger or whatever else, you know, and, and they'll be, you know, and say, how many people you get saved today? And they'll go, uh, uh, 23, 23, yeah, 23. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh. When you see somebody get genuinely saved, you're bouncing off the walls, you feel like doing cartwheels, you know, you, you know, it, it's so exciting, you just, I can't believe, I, oh man, even when you had a chance when the Lord opens up a door of, of, of witnessing, and you get to water a seed or you get to plant a seed and you're just excited and you're just, oh, man, oh, that was, oh, that was so good. And, and you mean you can tell me you get 23 people saved and you just kind of, yeah, 20, yeah, uh, yeah, 23 people. Yep, I'm going to eat my sandwich here. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, thank you. Yep. I don't think so. I don't think so. Genuine conversions are very, very rare. And I don't believe that they're just a boom, instantaneous, hey, the guy hears it for the very first time. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I can pray this prayer. Okay, good. There's no repentance of sin. Oh, great. Hey, this is really good. No, there's planting, watering, and then God gives the increase. And sometimes between the planting and the watering and God giving the increase, it can be a span of many years. You have some kind of a relative or whatever else that's saved and they correct you as a teenager. They say, you know... Um, you really shouldn't be doing that. You know, the Bible kind of goes against that. Oh, yeah, Grandpa, yeah, sure, ha, 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 you know. Um, I will say that. My grandfather was one of the early influences in my life. Um, he was grieved by my long hair as a teenager. He died when I was 17 years old. And I, I know I brought him shame. He was ashamed of me. I was, I was a, a Christian rock slash heavy metal, you know, listening to and whatever else, long hair and just... Uh, disgusting teenager and it grieved my grandfather and he'd say some things you know that that's not right brian you shouldn't be doing that you shouldn't be listening to that stuff I, yeah, okay grandpa yeah all right okay and i in my mind i'm going get with the times grandpa you're an old man you don't know what's cool you don't know what's hip you know grandpa come on born in the early 1900s you know 1910 i think it was when he was born uh yeah okay grandpa sure but you know what? That always stuck with me. 
And when I heard the truth after I got saved, hey, this rock and roll stuff is wicked. And I started looking into it and I saw the, the different beats and the different rhythms and the backbeats and all this other stuff that goes along with that whole thing. And I realized the origin of rock music. All of a sudden, whoa, the seed that was planted. And the ironic part is I was part of a youth group thing and there was actually some guy that came and actually talked to the youth group about heavy metal. And at that time, it was after grand, my grandfather died. And I'm sitting there and I got the long hair and I got these, you know, skulls and, you know, heavy metal t-shirt on. And I'm sitting over with all the other heavy metal heads, you know, we call them. And we're all sitting there, you know, we're cool, you know, this stupid, you know, guy. And he rebuked us. And he said, that stuff that you're listening to, he said, that's no better than the secular stuff out there. It's wicked. It's of the devil. It's satanic. And outwardly, I'm going, <laughs> you know, okay, whatever, loser. But inwardly, I'm thinking, huh. And then he started getting into actual talking about Satanism and what it is and whatever else. And I started paying attention. And that's not, you know, ultimately what led me to the Lord. But I'll tell you what, there were seeds planted and then there was watering done with those seeds before God eventually got me to the point of me being broken and the self-righteousness melted away. And I just said, standing there before a holy, righteous God, looking up at that cross and saying, I'm not going to make it, am I? I don't think I want to make it. I, I, all my church membership and all the nice little things I've done and everything, I don't think that's going to get me in. Uh, God, could you please save me? I believe what the book says. And because of that, because of what this book says, and the fact that I believe it, I understand that this book condemns me. Please save me. And I cried out to the Lord for the first time in sincerity and truth without the self-righteous pride that I used to have. And God gave the increase. If you'd have said to me back then, hey, uh, brother, you're going to be in international ministry someday. I'd have said, <laughs> okay, um, no, I'm going to be an international motocross perhaps or international wood turner or whatever else I was interested back in those days. Ministry, not on your life. But you see, God purchased me with his blood and then he told me what to do after, I, after he saved me. Say it that way. <laughs> Verse 8, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. You know, when you actually are serving the Lord, and you're serving Him out of the right spirit, and you realize it's just planting and watering, God will give the increase. And when it's this whole hyper soul winning thing and whatever else, um, when it comes along and they start saying, when's the last time you led somebody to the Lord? Um, how about saying, you know, uh, I've planted quite a few seeds and, and Lord, by His grace, has allowed me to water some as well. Oh, you know, where, where are you getting that from? Oh, I don't know, just the Bible. Where are you getting your hyper soul winning from? This whole soul winning movement stuff. Where's it at? you got to twist all kinds of scriptures to even prove it. Verse 9, For we are laborers together with God. Isn't that interesting? You know? And you'll get this thing again from these Baptist soul winning types that they'll say, they'll say, there's people dying and going to hell because there's not a Christian to witness to them. Really? Where's that at in Scripture? Where's that at in Scripture that people die and go to hell because a Christian didn't witness to them? We're laborers together with God. God is going to give you opportunities to witness and you'll fail sometimes. Just right out there. Uh, early on in my salvation and things, I remember I was at a motorcycle shop the one time and this guy said something about going to a bar and I had a perfect opportunity. I said, well, I don't go to bars. And he said, oh, why is that? And I just froze. And I I just don't, you know, and I thought, oh, you know, and I was kicking myself after that. And I thought, why didn't I say something about the Lord or the Bible or something? I could have said something. I failed. You say, well, then the Lord never used you after that. Uh, here I am. <laughs> The Lord will give you chances to plant the seeds. He will give you chances to water. But it is up to Him to do the saving. And all this soul winning stuff, you know, we've gone out, we've led people in these little prayers and whatever else. That stuff is damning people to hell. And maybe you'll get somebody that goes through that and they actually, it'll be a planted seed. Again, the pastor that I know, you know, knew back years ago, Guy Mosbrook, the pastor of Liberty Baptist Church. He said 
that that, even though it was a, a false conversion there, there's Baptist soul winners that came to him, it was false, but he said what it did is it made him start to question some things. And he said, I don't think that was legitimate what they did there, but I need to know. I'm, you know, he was going to a Methodist church at the time, and he said, I don't really know what the gospel is. And, you know, it wasn't that thing that them guys gave to me, this soul winning thing. That wasn't it. But I need to know. I want to know about salvation. What, you know, and it started to make him question. He said, well, then it's okay to go soul winning. No, no, because what a, lot of a lot of times what happens with people is they're given a false sense of salvation, and then they're going out and they're living the rest of their life. Again, I've, I've met people like that, going door to door, going, talking to people, witnessing to people, and they'll say, yeah, at some point in time I prayed this prayer, so I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't know. You say, well, how do you know? Well, I don't, but you know, I, did, I did what they told me to do. They told me I was saved, so there you go. I'm in. Very, very dangerous. We are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. And again, what is the whole soul winning movement about? It is about inviting people to church. And not one verse of scripture to support that. Nowhere in this King James Bible does anybody ever invite a lost person to church. Not one verse. Not one verse that says go to church. We're going to church on Sunday. We're going to church on Saturday, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're going out for a soul-winning crusade. Not one verse of Scripture, and yet they'll use their movement to condemn you and to condemn me if we're not part of it. I'd go find a good local church that has soul-winning. Uh, no Scripture. None. At all. You see, when He saves you, He has purchased you, and you become His bondservant. And he's going to give you opportunities. He's going, to, he's going to put you in the way of people where you need to be at certain times. And like I said, you might fail, Lord, sometimes, but he'll put you in that service. That's why he saved you. All right? Very important. Nobody's going to stand before God someday right now and say, um, no Christian ever witnessed to me. You never gave me a chance. Um, God's going to give everybody a chance. All right? Uh, seeds will be planted especially nowadays with the internet and everybody can get access to preaching and teaching and whatever else. Um, nobody's going to be without excuse. But uh, let's go to the book of Proverbs. We're going to go back and we're actually going to see the verse where the uh, soul winning people will try to use. Pro Proverbs chapter 11. We'll close here with this passage of scripture. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Um, was Solomon going out soul winning? No. And you have to deny multiple portions of Scripture to try and prove that he was, and that this is a reference to going out and preaching the gospel. Um, you have a soul or a winning personality. You're, you're winning people. You're making friends is what this is talking about. It has nothing to do with preaching the gospel. Not a thing. So you say, what was the point of this whole sermon here? What was the point of this whole thing? It's to exhort you out there as a Christian to not be shamed by Baptist you know, soul dammers. They're not really soul winners, they're soul dammers. Um, don't let them shame you. Don't let them pull this little trick on you and say, when's the last time you personally led someone to the Lord? No, 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 no. no. Uh, what you're doing there has no basis in Scripture. Preaching the gospel to the lost comes in the form of planting and watering, and then God gives the increase. And those are things that you should be doing. You should be planning. You should be watering when God gives you the opportunity. Um, planning is the easy part. Okay, you can plant very easily with gospel tracts. You can go out to a store. You can go to wherever. You can hand them to people, whatever else. Um, but be open for those times when God will give you the chance to water. God's going to set things up. Again, we are laborers together with God. So why then do you have to force yourself out of that situation with God? And I'll tell you, there were, there were plenty of times where I just, we went out and we did this soul winning thing and whatever because it was our duty to be there on, you know, time to go soul winning every week and whatever. And we had the big, the big city map on the wall with the fluorescent highlighters that you, you highlight the streets that you've been to and you got to take out the notepad and say, come back to this person that, just like salesmen or Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons. Mm -hmm. I've been through the thing. Okay, you're not going to talk to me and say, oh, you've never done it the, you know, the right way or whatever. 
I did it the uh, Jack Hiles method. I did it the way of the soul winning Baptist. All right. But I remember there were times I went out and it was just, I felt the Lord's not even in this. This is ridiculous. We're wasting our time. You know, totally wasting our time. And it wasn't just people slamming the door in our faces and we're going to call the cops and cussing us out and whatever else. That stuff happens, you know, with that whole door winning or door to door or soul winning type of deal. Um, it was people telling us what we wanted to hear. Praying a little prayer or whatever. Oh, yeah, I'll be at church on Sunday and whatever else. And you go, no, you won't. <laughs> you're not going to live for Jesus Christ. Oh, you're a Christian. Yeah, you know, you can. I can just tell. I can look in there. I can smell the, you know, smell of alcohol or whatever else. I hear filthy stuff coming from your television, but you're a Christian. You know? I, you know, we could come around and bring you a Bible. No, no, no. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm saved. I'm not, I just don't want anything to do with that stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sure. So, I uh, just wanted to make a little video on this because this, this whole soul winning thing is just one of the biggest scams out that's out there right now. Um, preaching the gospel is not a scam. That's what we're supposed to do. But it happens, like I said, with planting seeds and then waiting for the Lord to give you a chance to water those seeds. And again, you might have a co-worker. You witness to them, and it goes a while, and all of a sudden the conversation comes up again, and this time they're a little bit more open. They want to hear a little bit more. Again, I, I deal with people a lot, and, and uh, I'll get people, and they'll say, I said something to my you know, Catholic mother or my brother or sister or whatever else, and the first time they just don't even talk to me about that. They get, they get angry at you or whatever else, and you just keep praying about it. And um, you're not a failure, you see. You didn't win the soul right away. You should have led them to the, through the prayer and had your special little prayer all laid out so you can just get them and trap them and you can win their soul whether they want it one or not. Uh, no. You witness to them. They get mad. They yell at you. Go, get out of here. You're, you're nuts. Whatever else. You come back. Say something a little bit more. Oh, this time I can actually show them some scriptures from the Bible. Well, praise, God, praise Lord, then they're ready to be saved. Uh, no, that's Lord's business. And the Lord's going to set that thing up. And you can tell somebody, somebody says, what do I need to do to be saved? You put them in touch with God at that point in time. You say, well, go off and, and pray and just ask the Lord, say, you know, I mean, do you understand that you're a sinner? You show them what the scriptures say. And they say, yeah, I understand that stuff. Okay. And go ask the Lord your own way and, and just, you know, you believe what the Bible says. Okay, then ask Him. Ask Him to save you. That's between you and God now. I can't take you and, and lead you through this prayer thing and say, okay, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you could, you know, and you truly sincerely meant it in your heart, you've, you're, you're now passed from death to life. You've gone, you're going to go to heaven when you die. You need to get it sorted out. You need to get it sorted out between you and God, not me. I'm not your savior. There are no Denlingerites. Okay, you're not of Brian. All right, you're not of Ruckman. You're not of Whoever, you're saved by Jesus Christ. So, uh, take the pressure off, okay? This whole soul winning thing is a scam. It was designed by the Baptists to get people into their churches so they could get their money. That's what the whole thing is. That's what Jack Hiles was all about. Died a very wealthy man. Watch my videos on him. He, he comes out and just admits it, you know? I'm buying buildings and I'm buying this and I'm buying, I don't even know what I'm going to use them for. I just, you know, I want to buy them and, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then next, next breath he's, we just barely have enough money to pay the bills. Oh, you know, yeah. Okay. And his daughter comes out and says, uh, my father died a very, very wealthy man. He's a con artist. And this, he's the one that brought in this whole hyper soul winning movement. He was the big promoter of that whole thing. It's not scriptural, brethren. So don't let these people browbeat you with their, when's the last time you want a soul to the Lord? Nope. Sorry. Oh, you, I plant seeds. And when the Lord gives me opportunities, I get to water those seeds. And I thank Him for it. And God does the saving. I don't do the saving. That's how you answer them. Okay? So, I pray this has been an encouragement to you. Um, I went through the whole Baptist system, the whole mind control Baptist thing. This guy screaming up there, telling you you weren't out, you know, on door to door. You weren't out for visitation. What are you doing? You're probably not even right with the Lord. You know, I've been through the whole thing, 
Uh, I've I've had that thing just been browbeat, you know, that I've not won souls, and, I, and I've been just in agony that I've never been able to, to sit somebody down and just take them the whole way through and just, you know, present the gospel, get them saved with this presentation of mine, and then, and then lead them through the prayer and say, congratulations, you've just been won to the Lord by me. You know, I haven't been able to do that. But what I have been able to do is I have witnessed to people, and the Lord's given me a chance to water seeds that other people have planted many times and I've seen people get saved genuinely born again lives changed radical changes in people's lives and when I see that the joy and the excitement that comes is something that these Baptist hyper soul winners don't know anything about and I stay in contact with a lot of these people I really do Check up on them. And, hey, can I send you things and whatever else? I mean, I, you know, I can only do so much. I mean, there's a lot of people I'm in contact with. So sorry if I don't get to you. If you don't get to your comments or whatever else, I'm sorry about that. But uh, this whole soul winning thing, I mean, you, know, you, you go back through the years of my preaching and you'll hear me saying it. You need to be out winning souls. There's no scripture for that. None. What's going on back there in Proverbs chapter 11? It has nothing to do with preaching the gospel. Nothing. Solomon didn't even have the gospel to preach. <laughs> What's he going to preach? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ before he even came and died and was buried and rose again? So, <laughs> all right, that's going to be it. I just want to encourage you. Um, just plant seeds when you can and be open and just, just pray. I mean, I, I'll tell you another thing, just a little bit of way of encouragement here. Um, I've actually prayed different times before we go to a store. I'll just you know, get a feeling from the Lord. Just you know, bow my head and I'll say, you know, we always pray before we leave in a vehicle, and just uh, Lord, please watch over the house while we're going. Please watch over the vehicle. Help it to run good, especially when you drive old junkers like we drive. And um, you know, and I and a couple times I've prayed, uh, Lord, give us a chance to witness. Give us a chance to 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 talk to somebody about you, and it's happened on more than one occasion. And uh, I'm not about to film that, by the way. I see, you know, when are you winning souls? You know, and things. You see that? Where's your videos of you out soul winning? Uh, I don't film that stuff. It's not soul winning either, by the way. It's planting and watering. I don't film that stuff. I mean, you're talking with somebody about their eternity. You whip out a camera and say, okay, well, you know, let me get too emotional and think, what is this, reality TV, you know, reality TV or something like that? No, don't cheapen it. My word. But I've had this thing happen numerous times. You go to a store and all of a sudden, just out of the blue, somebody comes up, strikes up a conversation, Lord gets brought into the thing, and I'm just there, you know, witnessing to them. And, and I see people walking by and they're, you know, they're looking. And they'll even, I've seen even people stop and they're kind of checking out things. As, and I see them doing this kind of a, you know, they're kind of listening in and whatever else, eavesdropping. And then I'm just laying it out, laying out what the Bible teaches. I love it, it's exciting. It'll give you a, a spiritual joy and, and just, oh, and you're going around and just, oh, man, that was, that was so good. Thank you, Lord. Boy, thank you for putting me in that situation. Not this fear and dread of, oh, I didn't get him to pray a prayer. I didn't lead him to the Lord. I, oh, oh, you know, I can't mark it down that, I, you know, in my little Bible, little thing here, I just have so many people that I've won to the Lord. And I just, you know, I've led thousands to the Lord. <laughs> So that is going to be it. Um, pray about this. Okay? Out there, if you're saved, born again, and just uh, say, Lord, give me more opportunities to plant and water so that you can give the increase. I do hope this has been a challenge to you. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.